right, let's get started. Um, so for one, I wanna welcome each and every one of you to the uh, 2022 uh, State of the Markets. Great to, great to have all roughly 100 folks here. Um, just quite simply, here's, a, here's what we're gonna go over and then I'm gonna let David kind of take, every, every, uh, or take it away. Uh, so for one, I know we would all like to be over at the Doubletree in person, and I hope we're going to be able to get back to that in, uh, in the future. And then simply what we're going to cover today is David's going to go over what happened in 2021. We're going to attempt to peer into the crystal ball of 2022. And so you folks know, you know why we do stuff like this and why we do the videos. Um, it's really just to make things easier for you. I know um, you see a lot of crazy stuff and hear a lot of crazy stuff from friends, family, the news, the market. We do this stuff just to help communicate and break it down quite simply to make it easier so you can make good choices you know, with your money. Um, if you're not getting any of the videos, please let us know, uh, specifically let Jill know, and we'll, uh, we'll make sure that gets set up for you. But uh, without further ado, I will let uh, David take everything over. Uh oh, thank you, son. There we go. Well, uh, first of all, I wished I could uh, see everybody live instead of doing this uh, virtual thing that we've had to do the last year or so. But uh, I'm, I'm reminiscing about the last time we did this, which was February of 2020. And we got to do it at the Double Tree. We had about 100 folks, which looks like got about 100 folks again here today. But I uh, got to get the real hugs instead of the virtual hugs that, uh, that I'm sure we have coming here. And before I get too far into this, what a pleasure it is to sit here and be introduced by my son. Uh, I don't know if uh, those of you with kids that uh, have had this pleasure that I've had, and that is that every day I get to come into work and I get to work with my kid. What a great feeling this, this is. Uh, and for those of you that haven't had a chance to meet Tim or get to check out any of his videos or anything like that, please take a, a minute to do that. As many people have said to me, hey, Dave, he looks like you, but he's a lot younger and better looking. <laughs> I can't argue with that. Um, however, he's not as smart as I am yet, but he learns stuff every day and it's a, a treat to have him around. So if you don't, if you get a chance, uh, give him a call. Okay, boom. Here we are, done this before. And uh, I think can we get rid of that? I can fix that up over there. Um, we've done this before. I'm working on my uh, yeah, on my screen. That. Boom. That's why I have Tim here. Great. So um, one of the things that uh, we do this, and you guys remember, uh, we do this to help people to make good choices. It's better that you hear it from me than hear it out on the street. Okay, when you hear something on the uh, internet or something like that, it, it, you go, wait, Dave already talked about that. I don't have to react. I don't have to jump up and get crazy about any of those things that I may or may not have heard from somebody around town. So that's what we're going to do. Uh oh, here's all our disclosures. You guys, of course, want to read all of those. What are we going to do today? As Tim mentioned, we're going to talk about what, it, what happened last year, what drove the performance, where are we today, and who knows uh, where we might be next year or this year. Let's start with our fearless forecast. You know, every year that we, we've done this, that uh, uh, we... we uh, poll all of the, the people that uh, the smart people in the world in front of us, you can see Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, uh, Credit Suisse, Goldman Sachs, for them to take a look inside their crystal balls 
And what might they think what the year would have to hold for all of us? Well, last year, they all got together and uh, figured that, yep, the group average that the S&P, remember the S&P is the, the, our barometer, our benchmark for stocks in this country. I like to say America's greatest companies. They believe that the uh, S&P would finish at uh, 4,100 for the year, which was about a 10% increase over where, where it started the year, but finished up at 4,700, a 26%. Holy cow, you guys, boy, did they get it wrong. But I'm okay with that because all of these forecasts, they always want to be a little bit more conservative, which is good. And we'll get to look at what they are for next year, but I'm happy with exceeding expectations. And because we had that great year last year, 26%, some pundits right away said, oh, this is too much, too fast. Markets have gone up. There's going to be a correction. There's going to be a recession. Well, for those of you that have tuned into the videos, you know that last time we talked, I suggested that because of what a great year we had, that I wouldn't be surprised to see a 10% correction. Well, I didn't have a crystal ball then, um, and I don't now, but in January, we got about a 10% pullback or correction. Dow was down about uh, 12 percent, the S&P down about 14, the NASDAQ down almost 20. Now, that was a week and a half ago. Today, we're up off of those lows. And where do we go from here? I don't know. That's why we do this. And, and we'll take a look to see. But the expectations were that the recession. Now, let's let's not on the horizon as far as we can see. The S&P last year in 2021, if you recall, we were coming out of COVID. Um, the, the, uh, the, oh, just went through a very divisive presidential election, which we were led to believe that if uh, most important election ever in history, well, it seems like the one before that, they said the same thing, and I'm sure they'll say that the one after. But we were led to believe that if your candidate didn't win, that uh, it would be the end of life on the planet. I many times shared with all of you that markets can live with Republicans. They can live with Democrats. They can live with high taxes. They can live with war and peace, but they can't live with uncertainty. So in November and leading up to the elections of 2020, we had this, this big down. Once we got certainty after the election, may not have been the certainty that you wanted, but we got certainty and markets took off from there. They took off and continued right through January inauguration, um, some other things. We, we had a vaccine. That's why markets were going. People were going to get back to normal. Markets can like it when things look rosy. And at that point in time, yeah, things were looking good because of the vaccine. People were gonna get back to normal. A Couple of milestones in here. Right here in April 1st, the S&P crossed over a 4,000 milestone. 4,000, started here the year at 3,700. That's important because in March, a year before in 2020, the S&P was 2,000. Wow, Dave, you're telling us that the S&P doubled in about a year? Yeah, I'm telling you, that's what it did. And that's what markets can do, okay? How do you get to, to be there and enjoy that when those things happen? Because it doesn't happen often and it may only happen once in our lifetime, but you got to be there, folks. So we, we went through that. We saw the rumblings of inflation. Inflation started to rise. 
Okay, we put out a, a video about inflation and what you should do about it, but our economy was rolling. All of these were very good. And then we see Delta cases, the new variant. Okay, markets pull back on that. Then more good news. By the way, the fourth quarter, the third quarter in here was not a good quarter. Many of you and a few people called and said, hey, Dave, I was looking at my statement and I lost money in this quarter. No, you didn't. You didn't lose money unless you sold stuff. But that down quarter is the price you pay for the great quarter that we had, which was the fourth quarter. We saw earnings exploding. We saw um, uh, inflation go up. And at the end of the year, we knew, or the Fed announced what we all knew, and that was that uh, they were going to increase interest rates. A surprise to, to no one. What moves markets? Well, corporate earnings move markets. And, and we take a look at uh, here, corporate earnings all the way back to 2016. Now, what's important about this is corporate earnings are what drive stock growth. That's what allows people to buy something knowing that that company is going to earn in the future. Uh, we've seen these, these numbers along the bottom are increases in corporate uh, earnings were up 5% for that quarter, 7% for that quarter. Fast forward, things are going along nicely until we get to January, February of 2020. When I sat in front of all of you at the Doubletree Hotel and told you that we had the greatest economy on the planet. And that was true at the time because everything was great, but that was before COVID. Um, it was a funny little tidbit of trivia that uh, we did that meeting on the 18th of February in 2020. Great timing. The 19th of February was the peak of the market, like the next nine months. What timing? So uh, we, we saw that, that uh, second quarter where it pulled all of the earnings and the growth down. And then we had that awful second quarter. Close down the economy, companies uh, are, are not open. So therefore earnings are negative. We saw this right here. Corporate earnings went negative. This is important because later on in the presentation, I'm gonna bring you back to show you why things are so good because some of this you're comparing against so bad. Third quarter was, was pretty good, a, or was, was still negative because we had a lot of uh, carryover. But then the fourth quarter, we got to see earnings increase again, which caused markets to, to go up. Uh, these these uh, earnings here okay, are what expectations are for this year. And as you can see, these are pretty doggone good. But look at what I just shared with you. These numbers are a huge increase, 25%, but they're 25% over bad numbers. So need to put it into perspective, but they are still very, very good. And it bodes well for this year. Another way to look at these uh, corporate profits, even if I go all the way back to 1988, to kind of give you some perspective on what we're talking about here. 1988, earnings on America's greatest companies were about $25 a share. Now, you can see here we had a recession in the 90s. And for those of you that uh, recall, uh, back in 2001, two, and three, we had three down years in a row in the markets. And corporate earnings were down, okay? We had a recession. And then of course, this is the great financial crisis, a little bump in the road in 15, and there was 2020. But look at every time things were down, corporate earnings bounced back. 
And now you see consensus or estimate earnings for this year are way up here. Again, holy cow. This is very good for markets and for the economy. Because as I've said, that, uh, that, that these kinds of things are what fuels the markets. Dave, how could this be so big? How could this be so good? Well, uh, how are companies doing so well? It's technology. Technology has allowed us to do so much more with so much less. For example, I'm talking to 100 plus of you out there here on Zoom technology. That didn't exist two years ago. Well, they were a startup, okay? But think about this, folks. You can now, the pandemic has pushed things so much farther ahead that Amazon, you can call something up, order it in the afternoon. It'll be at your house tomorrow or could be. Um, that's what technology has done. You can FaceTime with your doctor and, and do all of the, the, the stuff. That's technology. It's made people more efficient. And that will, not, that will not stop. That will continue. Technology has pushed companies to become more and more efficient. Um, even when we get people back to work, true story, the guys don't know, I don't make anything up. I was flying out, Kathy and I, uh, we were at the Detroit airport. And it was six o'clock, 6.30 in the morning, wanted to get something to eat, went into McDonald's. Okay, there were a couple of customers there, but there were hardly, there were no employees. There were two, two employees, but they had put kiosks in, in the lobby. And the only way you could order was through the kiosk and pay with your credit card. Then you went up to the counter, they had your food ready and you just walked away. Now, I'm not saying it's good, bad or indifferent, but even when people come back to work, that technology has made McDonald's for that so much more efficient and companies are doing the same thing. Don't wanna beat a dead horse, but this is a really big deal. What you see in front of you now is, is the estimates and how growth. Last year in September, the estimates for 2021 uh, our 2020 uh, was 140. 2021, they said that estimates were going to be $201 per share for those America's greatest companies. They actually ended up being $210. Once again, folks, markets love upside surprises and they react very poorly to downside disappointments. Earnings were up. We saw a great fourth quarter. Look at what they're projecting now for earnings for 2022 and 2023. Their increases. Those again bode pretty well for the markets and the economy. Where are we today? Where are we today? What's happening? And where are we going? Well, let's take a look. The economy today um, is doing pretty well. This is 2021. We saw GDP growth in the first quarter of 6%. Um, seven, we had a, a slowdown in Q3, which caused uh, markets to react a little bit. But we had an incredible fourth quarter of last year. 8% is huge, huge. And it is unsustainable, unsustainable. It cannot continue. Um, it, it just happened because of a variety of, of figures or factors, but that's not sustainable. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. The labor market, unemployment, people are getting back to work, okay? Slowly, but the, but the labor market is getting better going to take a couple of years before we get back to uh, um, where we were because we were down below 4% for unemployment, but we're headed in the right direction. 
inflation. Here is the, the big thing that I talked about on two of the videos. Inflation, Dave, I, I turn on the news and it's inflation. We did a couple of videos. Um, you know, it's the nine, it's the 80s again. No, it's not. Okay. Inflation today was created because a shortage of the supply chain, a break in the supply chain, and some things that, that we'll talk about a little bit later, what's caused this spike. So inflation was uh, historically 2.2 uh, .2 for the last 10 years. I told all of you that when we did your plans that we're building inflation in because inflation is simply the fact that a loaf of bread is going to cost more in the future than it does today. And we need to prepare for that. And you have to stay ahead of inflation with your investments. So inflation bump up to 2.6 and then 5.4, 5.4 and then 5.8. The last year finished at 7% for the year. Huge. But once again, I believe unsustainable. Consumer sentiment. Where are we today? People are very confident with the markets and with the economy. People today have less debt than they've had in 40 plus years. We'll say that again. Consumers have paid down debt paid down on mortgages, paid off cars, paid down on loans, paid down on credit cards. There's less debt today than there has been in 40 plus years. Housing, we still can't build homes fast enough, but uh, that's there. This slide looked familiar to many of you because it should. This is just like the slide that I talked to you about back at the double tree in 2020 in February. At the time, I talked to all of you and said, my gosh, things look rosy. It is great. By the way, if you can see on your screen, green is good. Yellow, orange is not bad. Red is bad. On the screen, there was a lot of green. A lot of green. Back in 08, there was a lot of red. We only had two things that were problems. And I told you at the time, I said, yep, political environment. Um, Donald Trump was in office. She either loved him or hated him. Very divisive and polarizing. And yet a geopolitical risk. At the time, you had Vladimir Putin, who was uh, rattling sabers about going into the Ukraine. And you also had Kim Jong-un, who had some nukes that potentially could lob them over to California. Both of those were problems. Well, after COVID 2020, November now, remember markets greatest decline in history followed by greatest recovery. Markets have recovered. We're just coming off that third quarter that wasn't great, but look at how our, our indicators Still not bad, a lot of green. Let's look at where we are today or last month or so. <laughs> look at the screen today. I'll talk slow so everybody gets a chance. Monetary policy is good. US outlook, consumer sentiment, disposable personal income. People have more money today, and we'll talk about this later, than they've ever had in history. Mortgages are cheap, labor is coming back, spending, fiscal policy, um, corporate profits are really good, okay? Energy costs are not bad, and we'll talk about that. What do we have? No red here, okay? Some slightly orange, same things. Political environment, we're still a divided nation, and geopolitical risk. We still have Vladimir Putin out there who is rattling sabers. We have also equity market valuation. Could be a problem, but we're going to talk about that. So if you hear or you see uh, on the internet, Oh my gosh, the markets are too high. I mean, it, they, there's going to be a crash. No, there's not. 
That just means markets are high, markets can go higher. That's like saying all of you are the oldest you've ever been. That's true, but we all hope that we're gonna get another year or two older. So it doesn't mean it's the end. Let's take a look at some of the headwinds, things that are gonna be potential problems for this year, 2022. Well, Omicron is still out there, uh, even though today we've seen that start to numbers come down. Uh, what's next? I don't, I don't know, okay? Could there be another wave? Of course, okay? Um, but if there is, how are we gonna react to it? I can promise you, folks, that we will not close down the economy like we did before. Some mistakes that were learned, and uh, I think that moving forward, that cooler heads will prevail. Is the Fed able to tame inflation? We'll see, we'll see about that. And what about uh, interest rates? You know, uh, Fed, they've already said they're going to increase interest rates, we knew that. And if you recall from some of the videos that we've done in the past, that's the Federal Reserve's job is to put on the brakes a little bit when the economy starts running hot and also the step on the gas when things are slowing down. It's not always perfect science and I don't envy their, their jobs because it's difficult for Jay Powell. Many people believe that there's going to be uh, three rate increases, four rate increases. Some even believe five rate increases this year. I don't know. I don't get paid to, to predict that and nor should you worry about it because they're doing what they need to do. What, uh, what we want to, to be careful for and what their job is, is that they don't want to overshoot the, the increase things too tight and cause a recession by increasing interest rates too much too quickly. For those of you that may recall, back in 2018, uh, Jay Powell said, yep, uh, markets are going good. The economy's going good. I think I need to step on the brakes a little bit to slow down this economy. And he, him and uh, the current president, uh, Trump, were getting in a little battle back and forth. And they said they were going to increase interest rates. And it was too much too fast. Markets did not react well caused a 20% pullback pre-Christmas of 2018, caused all the markets to go from being nicely positive to finish negative for the year. That's not something that they want to repeat. So I think that Jay Powell knows that and he's gonna be very cautious about what he does this year, okay? So they don't push markets into a, a recession. And if they do, what happens? Dave, you know, do we panic, do you? No, we don't. What we do is understand history and remember that even though we went into a slight recession in 20, end of 2018, that we were rewarded in 2019 by almost a 20% um, market growth. So we'll see on that. What can we do? Nothing. All you do is sit back and, and hope that they do the right thing and be patient when it comes out the other side. China. China is slowing, and we know that. Um, second largest economy on the, in the planet. And when they slow down, other economies are going to step in to, to, to pick up that slack. It's going to make a difference, but it's not a, a deal breaker. Tell me. Who out there is looking forward to midterm elections? Not me. The think about it, the divisive politics, those unending divisive political ads that interrupt our, our you know, evening television that get you wind up, wound up, the mudslinging back and forth on both parties. It's going to happen again this year. Um, you know, how do markets react to that? Well, I don't have a crystal ball, 
However, markets don't like uncertainty. And what we're going to get, I suspect, leading up to the midterm elections, to some degree of uncertainty. We're going to get a whole lot of mudslinging on both sides, which is going to be bad enough. But we're going to get some uncertainty. So I would expect that markets would pull back. What happens after the elections? You get certainty. Then what happens? Markets react to that. Okay. I've said this before, folks, and please, please try not to mix your politics with your investment planning. It's not a good mix. So either case, we're going to get through it. Geopolitical tensions, it's there. Okay, um, It's still there. Uh, Putin's still out there. Kim Jong-un is go gone, but uh, uh, there may be somebody else that's going to take his place. All of these are things that we know. What about things we don't know? Okay, things that can be tailwinds or yeah, things that we don't know, but uh, you never know what you don't know. You just wait and, and see. I know here's some things that can be tailwinds for us, some good things, and that is economic expansion. Economic expansion is, is, is continuing. Um, technology is leading the way. It is making us more effective and, and it's making us all more profitable. You can do more with less. Um, economic expansion, companies are ramping up. Manufacturing is ramping up. Those are really good things. Continued monetary accommodation. Folks, even though interest rates uh, may go up, uh, and they will, okay, this is still a really good environment for stocks. It really is. If you think about this, if the money that's sitting in your checking and savings accounts, by the way, there's a trillion dollars. There's more money than there's ever been in checking and savings accounts today. Your checking and savings accounts today earn 0.10. That's one-tenth of 1%. And interest rates go up. And now at the end of the year, you're earning 0.5, which is one half of 1%. You're earning 0.5 and inflation is at 3% or 4%. How long can you do that? I suspect not long because you're whittling away into capital. Stocks, even at 5 to 8%, are still a very good value. Corporate profits, we talked about those. Uh, uh, corporate profits are discussed. They're doing great. And the consumer is very healthy. There are record amounts of money sitting in checking and savings account in this country today. And the number is north of a trillion dollars with a T, way more money than there was back in uh, 08 and 09. What about equity values? Dave, you know, we, we talked about those. Uh, that, oh, equity values are too high. The market's too high. Well, um, historically, yeah markets are, valuations are a little bit high. But we've never been in an environment like this where we've had interest rates at near zero for, for this long. So based on that, I think equity values are, are fairly priced. We'll see. What about, uh, what's next? What do our, our forecasts uh, talk about? Well, before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit more about some things that many of you have wanted to talk to me about, and that is one, inflation. So this is inflation since 07, okay? The orange and the blue line, CPI, one is uh, without energy, one is with energy. Let's just go with Inflation, it spiked up last year. I told you 7%. Yep, um, that's not sustainable, OK? 
okay? That should come back down to earth. It's going to take another year, maybe two, before we start to see those numbers come back down. We will gradually, as we speak, shipping containers um, from the end of uh, uh, December to the end of January, the cost of shipping has come down about 20%. That's good, okay? As the supply chain gets settled, as people get back to work, it's going to, to bring that down. And as I mentioned about technology, we can do more with less, even when people come, come back to work. And if you might argue and say, oh, but Dave, people retired and they're not coming back. Okay, if that's possible, then you still have technology which is coming in to take its place. Uh, there's so many good things with, with technology that are happening today. Um, but inflation. Inflation over the last uh, year, gasoline, cost of fuel. Yep, it's gone crazy, Dave. It's gone crazy. Those greedy, uh, you know, petroleum companies, you know, they're gouging. Wait a minute. Remember up here at the top, this is year over year. We're comparing this year with last year. You guys may or may not recall, but I did a video and totally talked about the price of gasoline and petroleum when actually a barrel of oil went negative on the futures market. And I filled up my car and paid 44 cents a gallon. Yes, 44 cents a gallon I paid with my Kroger discount. Now, gas got less than a dollar a gallon in 2020. So you're comparing 350 or 325 a gallon today, which where it was a year ago, yeah, that's a huge spike. But if you take gasoline and put it into perspective, which was what I try to do with all of you, is to say, what was it in 2019 and 2018? It was about three bucks a gallon. So it's about the same. Used cars. Dave, so we got to be careful when we see these numbers. Used cars, they're up 30%. Absolutely. Absolutely. New cars are up a bunch too. Why is that? Well, think about this. You're shopping for a new car. You go to the, to the car dealership and there's one car on the lot. And there's two people that want to buy that one car. What happens to prices? They go up, don't they? Yep. I was at a uh, car dealership for fun. I, I stopped by in November and I looked at these cars and each one of them had, a, had an additional uh, market value adjustment added to it. One was 5,000, another one was 2,500. That was reflected the fact that dealers are selling new cars for over sticker. That's what they can do because there's only one or two on the lot. Think about this. After we get the supply chain figured out, that gets settled. Then you go on to the, to the uh, car dealership and now there's three cars and one person that wants to buy them. What happens to prices? They come down. So that's my theory. We'll see if I'm right or wrong on how that works. Let's look at inflation since 2000. Kind of eye-opening. What's the biggest thing that's gone up the most since the last 22 years, 21 years? It's hospital, it's hospital services. Is anybody gonna need those in the future? I hope not, but we probably always will. That's why we need to invest in things that keep us ahead of inflation college tuition, medical services, daycare. Boy, you ask any mom or dad, dad with little ones what's happened to the cost of daycare and preschool. It's gone up a bunch. But the good news is hourly wages have gone up, okay? So that's not a bad thing. Look at new vehicles. Vehicles pretty flat up until just recently when we saw the bump, which I shared with you why that is dealers can sell 
for more because there's no inventory, supply and demand. And I would argue today that automobiles have been great to us because you buy a 2020 or a 2021, that is just an incredible value considering what you could have got for that same dollar back in 2000. Look at what's really been good to us over the last 20 years. Wow. Appliances, the clothes we wear. What about cell phones? Your cell phone bills have gone down. Computers, toys, TVs. Has anybody seen the price of TVs at Costco? Oh my gosh, you can get an 86 inch TV for less than $1,000. It's incredible. So folks, some things have gone down and why? Technology has helped to drive these things to make them more affordable, and that will continue in the future. What about the whole pandemic? Yep, um, here I said, could be something else, don't know. Okay, but all viruses, pandemics, they, they start, they grow, they peak, and then they subside, okay? And whatever happens the next time, I suspect that will happen again, but we're making progress. They will, we will not repeat the same mistakes that we made last time. All right, let's look at where we're at today with, um, with stuff. Today, yep, um, for, this, for this quarter, um, or for the last quarter, I, I shared with you, we had some, some great numbers, but unemployment still coming down. I mean, the good news is that unemployment is still coming down, just not fast enough, okay? But um, those are good numbers. Now it's gonna take till the end of 22, maybe 23, before we see them get back to where they were, but we're headed in the right direction. These are good news for, for markets and for the economy. Okay, um, as for GDP, GDP uh, from 4% last time to, to four, right around this, slow down to three. Yep, because we should be fully back engaged. These numbers are respectable numbers for, the, for GDP numbers. They're great. Some of you may or may not remember me talking about the plow horse economy at our state of the markets meetings. Do you remember what the plow horse economy is? I said, just like an old plow horse, the economy, it's not fast, it's not sexy. It just gets up and slogs through the mud and gets stuff done. That was 2% in the economy. We did fine, well, we did okay. Okay, but now these numbers are good. These are respectable numbers for the economy. So lots and lots of things to be excited about and to be happy about. Um, unemployment, yep. I told you the good news is that uh, unemployment's coming down and wages are going up. And the best thing about that is that with rising wages is that the lower segment of the population have had wages go up the most. Yeah, the service workers, um, the restaurant workers, the people that work in the factories have had the biggest increases in wages. That bodes really well for the economy because when people have money, there's only two things you can do. You can spend it, which is good for the economy, or you can save and invest it. And again, when people save and invest, buying shares on the greatest companies in America, there's more buyers than there are sellers, prices go up. So this is a very good thing. All right, what's our, our fearless forecast? Our, our folks, what do they believe? Well, uh, they believe a modest gain for this year. Modest, single digits, very, very small. In fact, the S&P today is at about, um, uh, 45, 46 uh, today. So a pretty small gain, but you know what? Two things, um, I'd be okay with that because we've come off 
three, three triple digit or three years where we've had double digit gains in the markets. Folks, many of you, all of you are looking at your accounts, looking at your, your assets and thinking, wow, look at how much we have. Did you ever think we'd get to this point? Yeah, you've had great years, three of them in a row. Never promised you that, never guaranteed, nor will I, okay? I put you in a position where markets helped us to do that. Now, this year, if this year your markets are up 5%, I don't care. I'm happy with that. I'm happy because we need to take a little slowdown. Things are still good, but I'd be happy. All of these uh, forecasters, yep, they always tend to be a little bit on the low side anyways. But when you think about this, interest rates are still very low. You can't, doesn't make sense to keep your money in your checking and savings account. You got three to 4% uh, inflation and bonds last year, you've all heard me talk about this, as interest rates go up, bond values go down. And that's happening. Last year, bonds were down 2%. Year to date, we're down about another 2%. Very, very difficult um, to, to get anywhere with bonds this year and in the future. So what's left? Stocks. Our good friends at First Trust, uh, they, they are people that we talk to quite a bit. They believe that the, the S&P is going to finish a little bit north of 5,000, right up there with the Wells Fargo people. And they believe that we'll see 40,000, four zero on the Dow. Can that happen? Of course it can. Will it? We'll wait and see. All right. I want to take you to the value of staying the course. All the things that we've talked to, talked about so far, the ups and the downs, the value of staying the course. What we have in front of us is a one year, five year, 10 and 20 years. What happens if you put everything in the stocks or in our case, our chart, everything in the blue? which we would never do. And there's nobody out there that has all blue. We own diversified portfolios because that's how we built them. All right, but if you did, on any one year period, you have a statistical probability of being up 47%. Love that. Have the same exact statistical probability of being down 39. Would not like that and that would be difficult. So we don't do that. What we do is we diversify, we own different things. I won't go through all of the colors here. We're just going to go through a 50-50. This is the turquoise with 50% stocks, 50% bonds. And even though this is reacted this way, it will not necessarily do this in the future. But that by mixing those two together, the same statistical probability, you can be up 33%, but you've taken away that big down. And I've shared with many of you that you don't need to be, we don't need to be at the very top. We just don't want to be down here in the bottom. Being in the middle is a good place to be. Look at what happens if you do this turquoise over five years. Five years statistical probability is you've eliminated any negative. Over a 10 year, you've gotten eliminated that negative. And between a 16 and a 2% plus, not bad. And if you stick with that over a 20-year period, statistical probability is you're going to be somewhere between 14 and 5%. What's the key? The key is you've got to stay the course through the ups and the downs, the good and the bad. You've got to stick with the plan, which that's part of my job is to help all of you to stick with the plan. That's why we do this to give you enough information to help you to make good choices. Let's take a look at the, this next slide. Here I took the history of bull markets and bear markets all the way back to 1942. I won't spend a lot of time here, 
But as you can see, there's more blues, which are the, the good, the bull markets, and a lot less of the bad, the bear markets. In fact, the average bull market lasts four years, four and a half, with an average return of 150%. Four years with 150%. Average bear or bad lasts less than one year, and it's down 30%. That never feels good when you're there, but if you look at the big picture, these downs are the price we pay for the long-term. The short-term declines are the price you pay for the long-term gains. What does that do? Well, I'm gonna close and then bring Tim back up here in a minute to close us out. This is a chart, asset classes, all kinds of things since 2007. This is important. You don't want to be the number one for the year because statistical probability is if you were the number one in one year, you have a pretty good chance of being the worst the next year. You can see that from our chart. What's a good place to be? A good place to be is with a diversified portfolio that was built for a long-term plan, exactly like we do. You never get to brag at the cocktail party about how good you were, but you never are embarrassed about how bad it was. There's value, folks, to stay in in the middle, just like we, we see there. Well, I'm going to have Tim come up and wrap up. Um, but I'm going to say goodbye for now. Uh, the last 30 years, that this is how we built these portfolios for all of you. I built them this, this way, and uh, it's been my privilege to serve you guys for the last 30 years. And I'm suggesting to you that for the next 30 years, that nothing is going to change. We are still going to continue to do this, these things the same way. Um, I not, might not be here all the time. To, to, I'm going to try and take an extra day off from time to time. But as I suggested, if I'm not here, Tim, Tina, Jill, Kelsey will all be here to help to, to help you guys to make good choices with your money. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to the younger version of me. Thank you all. All right. So take us up. It's just the next one. All right. Oops. Anyways, so while I uh, while I catch back up, uh, David, that was great. We uh, you know we appreciate it. I know I learned lots, and I'm sure you all did as well. So a couple things to go over really before here uh, we let you go. Um, so so for one, what can you do in 2022? Um, you know to help you to help us. For one, main thing is just. Simply to keep us involved, if any big changes in your life, you know, we can help more and advise more with the more we know. And of course, if you have any questions about something maybe that you've heard or, or that you've seen, that's what we're here for. We're helping you to make good choices with your money. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to make sure that we streamline communication and break down, you know, all those, those different concepts that you hear. We do state of the markets. We do our monthly and bi-monthly videos specifically for that. We hear with emails, calls, and appointments, hey, can you tell me about that? Can you tell me about that? Can you explain that? And a lot of times, you're not the only person that has that question. That's why we do that. That's why we do the videos to make sure you know what's going on. Uh, and if you're not getting the videos for whatever reason, call Jill. She's the one that handles all that stuff. And um, David talked about technology in, in from 2020 all up until now and uh, all the great, uh, great moving forward and, stuff and things that we've had. Um, well, we now are going to have the ability where we can text confirmation or, or text remind you, kind of similar to your dentist or your doctor's office, hey, that uh, you're due to, to come in and see us. And then lastly, if you have a question, who do you call or, or really who does what? Who are the uh, who works behind the scenes? So Kelsey, I'm sure you know if, if you ever you call in, she's the first voice that you hear, or if you come into the office, she's the first face that you see. 
Both Tina and Jill are 10 year veterans here with us. Tina runs all the applications, she solves problems, and if you need money, she is the one to call. Jill runs stuff like this. She runs all of our events, all of our calendars. She's actually responsible for our new and improved website. So check out www.thefinctr.com. There are some familiar faces on there, but it looks great. Uh, and she's responsible for that. She also runs our videos as well. And lastly, there is my mother and she does just a little bit of everything. So again, questions are welcome. Um, you know, and, and we have some folks that, that ask us this, hey, I have somebody in mind that I think could benefit from stuff like that, or at least talking to you, please send them on over. That's, that's what we're here for. We like working with good people, just like yourself. But uh, with that being said, uh, we're gonna let you go. Is is a honor and privilege, you know, to serve. Um, and yeah, have a great 2022. We'll talk to you soon. I know.